the CSN 3M Mindset Monday podcast. I'm Andrew Wade with Case Specific Nutrition. On this channel, we focus on the three M's, mindsets, myth busting, and mentoring, all as they pertain to health and nutrition. This podcast is brought to you by Case Specific Meal Prep, our very own in-house meal prep and delivery service. We serve out chef-inspired, dietitian approved meals every week. Make sure you check us out, csmppgh.com. Place your orders by Thursday at noon so you can have your meals delivered contactless to your door on Sunday to be ready for your week ahead. Before we dig in today, I wanna make sure you take a moment and like and share this video as well as subscribe to this channel so that you can stay in touch with the CSN 3M podcast as well as all the other case-specific nutrition content that we are pumping out every week. Okay. Without further ado, we're kind of, uh, we're doing something a little bit different in the studio today. So a um, little background for those of you that are uh, new to the podcast or really just in general, maybe this is the first time I've really given an updated peek. So for those of you that don't know, we are, uh, we're about 80 podcasts in now, which is pretty cool to think about. It's evolved from me doing this in one of my offices with a little recording device to now we have um, our media director and our producer behind the camera and um, you know we're, we're, we're trying to make the content so it's more accessible for you and however you digest media one of the things that has remained the same though is that these are all one take off the cuff podcasts so I am not a <laughs> if, you, if you didn't catch this already I'm not like a note line by line person I'm more of a give me a buzzword and let me rant about it I'm an extemporaneous speaker it's how I've always been um, so when we shoot these, it's literally, I show up and we usually have one, two or three concepts for me to talk about. I sit down, toss my hair back and we just, we just go. Um, and so these really are kind of, uh, you know, sort of sudden, spontaneous, and they're meant to really give you some, some cool value in that partition way. So the reason that I have this young lady next to me, this is Devin. She is our media dietitian. Uh, you probably have seen her on a lot of our media platforms. You'll be seeing more of her uh, along with the other dietitians because she's the sort of piece that collaborates with the group. Uh, today while we were recording, or uh, Devin actually mentioned a topic or a concept that I really liked and she was really interested in. We said, you know what, why don't we just talk about this? Because yes. we started talking about it before the podcast and it was sort of one of those moments where it's like, we should be filming this. Yeah. Um, so this podcast, while they are all sort of spontaneous, this one is definitely going to be the most spontaneous, but we're, our hope is that uh, we get to share a really cool concept with you and sort of flesh out a neat idea that's gonna give you something to ask yourself every day, which is gonna be the take home message of today's episode, is you need to do some internal reflecting with this new framework mindset concept. Um, and it's something that you can almost check in on daily. So I'm gonna let Devin talk about the concept of a residual beneficiary. Thank you, okay, so <laughs> residual beneficiary is a new vocab word in my life. Uh, I heard about it uh, just listening to like a finance podcast and it really got me going. They were talking about how a residual beneficiary, I never heard this term before, Okay. and it's a person basically who receives all the leftover property or assets after a company has been liquidated or after someone passes away, after all the other assets have been distributed as they're supposed to be, whoever gets the scraps or the leftovers, that is the residual beneficiary. And that made me really think about, you know, we think of time as an asset. I would argue that time is probably the most valuable asset of all. I believe and so, so too. if we're thinking about, we all have the same 24 hours in a day, we all get to decide how we're going to spend those 24 hours. Are they living up to your values? So, you know, if we're thinking about time as a resource, maybe we schedule out eight hours for sleep, maybe we schedule out you know, a couple hours to hang out with our kids, we've got eight hours of work. Who gets those leftovers? Are you your own residual beneficiary in your life? You know, If we're thinking about our values as in what's important to you, are you carving out time to meal plan, exercise? If you're listening to this podcast right now, you're probably interested in your health, nutrition, and fitness. So if that's part of your values, if that's something that's important to you, you should be carving out time for that the same way that you would with your other values. 
Well so. said. And it's, you know, we, so we started kind of brainstorming this idea of, wait, a residual beneficiary, right? Someone that, you know, receives the benefits or what's left over, right? And we start to think about, okay, so what are the things that, you know, if you have someone, for example, where you're sorting out their will and they have debts and so you pay off the debts first and then what's left over is what that next of kin get. So what we have to look at here is, okay, for most of us, our job is that sort of like that debt in our time, right? We have 24 hours in a day minus our obligation that we have to pay bills. Mm -hmm. And so what's kind of cool and what I've been kind of brainstorming with this um, is the job, especially in the United States, has a tendency to take up more and more and more of our time, right? Like we, um, we end up working a lot more than eight hours. We end up not fully clocking out. And so you start to get to a point where you're skipping your lunch or you're sacrificing your workout uh, or you're missing things that you're doing with your kids. And to be fair, all of those things, time with your kids, your sleep, your exercise, those are actually supposed to be the things that you inherit, mm -hmm. right? Those are the things that are supposed to be the residue or what's left over. And so a lot of times, to a certain extent, I think of this as like, it's almost a challenge or a reminder of work-life balance, yeah. right? Are you in a place of work-life balance where you actually can benefit, um, you know, once the debts are paid, so to speak? Yeah. And that's something to think about where you can go, for example, when you give up that lunch time so that you can attend a meeting, Who's benefiting there? And, and, and what is that taxing onto you, right? Mm -hmm. um, or when you're working so late that you have to like rush to get fast food so that you can make it to soccer practice, also you can get home and check emails, right? Who's actually the beneficiary in that, right? Um, and again, it's good to give time for our kids and to our family. Um, and that's where you, had, you did a great thought about sort of our, what we'll call those lifestyle buckets, right? And I'll let you talk about that next. But it's that idea of like, we wanna make sure that the things that exist in your time actually are providing value to you. So if we think about our values as kind of like three separate circles, a lot of times this is how we break up, how we think about our life. We've got our work, we've got our relationships, and we've got ourselves. So think about your values in terms of that. So maybe your values are, I wanna be a valuable team member at work. I want to be a good spouse, a good parent, a good husband, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend. And then, you know, I want to be healthy and well and happy within myself. And so let's think of, are you uh, scheduling your time out accordingly? Again, you've got that time related to work and oftentimes that tends to be what creeps into our other aspects of life. But are you blocking out time to hang out with your kids? Are you blocking out time to be with your spouse? Are you blocking out time to get proper sleep, take meals, uh, think through meal prepping, et cetera, et cetera? Are you taking time to exercise? So the solution to this is starting with your values, thinking about what's important to you as far as work, relationships, and self, and then actually using those values to drive how you schedule your week and your day. So maybe it's you're taking 30 minutes every Sunday to think through how am I going to make sure that I get five healthy dinners throughout this Monday through Friday week. Maybe you take 30 minutes to think through what is my exercise going to be routine wise this week? How, when, and where am I going to exercise? Put those on your calendar like you would a meeting with your boss. You wouldn't blow off a meeting with your boss, right? So don't blow off that meeting with yourself either. Make that time and make it sacred. Because if you want to live up to your values, this is the only way to do it. Yeah, and something that piggybacks off of that, I actually kind of, I thought about it earlier, but as you said it, it kind of came to mind again, is in those three buckets, right? Our professional, our social, and our personal, each one of those really should have a residual benefit, mm -hmm. right? And so a job should have professional accomplishment as an aspect of it. We should get value from it, hopefully more than just money, yeah. right? Our relationships should provide us more than just human connection, right? Um, and our personal time should be more than just like the things that we do to like scrape by and be somewhat presentable, yeah. right? Each of these buckets are meant to help us flourish because when we think about the ultimate work-life balance, it's really being able to live passionately and happily through every aspect. Gone are the days 
of this thought where it's like, well, I just have to like suck it up eight hours a day and be miserable so that I can enjoy the, what's left over, right? The idea is, wait a second, let's get creative about this. Instead of thinking of that eight hours as purely just like a loss, what, could, what about that eight hours could actually be enhancing, could actually be growth-minded, could actually be valuable, could actually be enjoyed? What can we do to set it up so that you end your workday feeling empowered instead of drained? So that your social time doesn't have to be the rejuvenation, but can be sort of the metaphorical cherry on top, right? Exactly. And then your personal time isn't this recharge time that's trying to repair you and prepare you for all of it, but is instead the things that you get to do that are actually just for you. And so if we interpret it, those three things can work together as opposed to almost, I think a lot of people think of them as a game of tug of war, mm -hmm. right? Where it's like your, your professional life pulls against your social and personal, but the reality is they all should actually be sort of building on one another like a, like a framework or a structure. Your job, your relationships, and yourself should all be you living out your values. And so if you are taking time to think through what are my values in each of these aspects, how can I best live that out through creating a schedule that suits those values, you're going to see them not as chores but as opportunities to better yourself, to live out your values, and to be that person that you've always wanted to be. Well said. And um, if, if you haven't already, I would encourage you to listen to last week's episode, yep. which was on opportunities versus expectations. And this all kind of comes full circle, right? When we think about that residual beneficiary, well, when we perceive something as an opportunity, we genuinely benefit from it. Yep. Mentally, physically, emotionally, all the above. So I guess our ultimate question for you today is who is the residual beneficiary in your day-to-day -day actions and yep. choices, right? So in your professional life, do you, are you your residual beneficiary? Do you benefit, right? Does that job and career help you feel accomplished? Does it also allow you to live a lifestyle that allows to support your social? And does it share time with the personal care aspect so that all of those things can allow benefit for you so that you can truly be your best? Yeah. So that's our vocab word for the week is residual beneficiary. Think about who's getting the residual benefit in your life and whether or not that makes sense with you and your values. Love it. Thank you, as always, for tuning in to the Case Specific Nutrition Mindset Monday podcast. We will be back next week. And as we said before, make sure you like and share this video, hashtag spread the health, and subscribe to our channel so you can keep in touch with more of our fun, spontaneous vocab words and other more uh, planned episodes. <laughs>